Hello and welcome back to the top 85 games for the BBC Micro Video Countdown. In at number 39, it's Zalaga. Uh, this was created by Nick Pelling. Uh, it was released in 1983 under the Aardvark and the Alternative labels. And uh, it was based on the Japanese arcade classic Galaga from Namco, um, later released by Midway in North America. Um, so Zalaga is the is the is the effect, effectively the Galaga for the BBC Micro. Uh, in addition to being a great fun game and another excellent uh, showing from the Nick Pelling collection, uh, this game actually appears in the background of a 1986 Doctor Who serial, Trial of a Time Lord, uh, starring another Colin, Colin Baker. Um, and we're going to take a little look at that now, just before we get into the game. Okay, so having watched some aliens play Zalaga, let's uh, give it a go myself. Uh, so here we go, the objective of Zalaga is to score as many points as possible by destroying the insect-like aliens, who you will have uh, briefly seen in, the, in that last little video clip there. So a little bit of story here, which we're just going to skip through uh, and get straight in. So here we are, it's one of the caps lock and control style uh, controls here to sort of simulate that arcade cabinet uh, split between uh, sort of left hand and right hand side. Really does um, do, do, has the potential for damaging the return key. Um, so here we go. Now, uh, true Nick Pelling style, we get an excellent little jingle at the start. Great stuff, love that jingle. Okay, and we're in, so see how, how well we can get on here. As you can see, it is really, really fast. Um, a lot, lot, quite a bit faster, I think, than uh, than Arcadians. Um, wow, and yes, you really have to have your wits about you with this one. There you go, already lost a life. So you not only have got to deal with the bullets and missiles and so on descending, but the actual aliens themselves, sort of kamikaze style, hurling themselves into, there we go, <laughs> into, your, uh, into your defending ship. Now those those dark blue ones at the top there, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to get an appearance of it here, but ah, there we go. Excellent stuff. Now I've got a double base. Um, now the only thing is, it's actually borrowed it, I, I suppose, from my from my life pool. So um, it's 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 kind of handy in one respect. You get sort of double double the firepower. But uh, yes, it does mean that when when you lose it, it's uh, one of your lives gone already. So it's not quite the bonus that uh, you might think, but still, it's a nice little feature of the game. I'm quite a, quite a fan of that. Uh, oh dear. Not quite sure what happens if you uh, go into his... Oh dear, it's <laughs> game over already. All right. Oh, it's in lowercase. There we go. That's because I've been using the uh, caps lock key for uh, my controls. All right. Let's try that again. Yes, I don't know what happens if you've run out of lives and the, uh, the, the dark blue alien... Uh, sort of does that um, tractor beam uh, effect. I don't know if that just destroys you or I'm not really sure what happens there. Whether it sucks you in. Oh. But, uh, we'll see whether or not we can uh, make a bit more progress than last time round anyway. So yes, I mean, uh, obviously on the sturdy original BBC Micro, the, uh, the uh, obviously it was built for with, uh, with with child users in mind, so the keys were fairly sturdy and you know could take quite a lot of uh, bashing. The uh, the poor enter key on my on my laptop that I'm using to emulate this is uh, <laughs> it's probably not taken quite such a pounding in, uh, in in the recent past. But yes, you really do have to. Oh, doing very well here. Just staying over the left hand side, escaping the bugs. Okay, so it's reminiscent of uh, Attack on Alpha Centauri, of course, but but quite a lot more energy to it than that. Um, you know, we've got real attack patterns, attack formations. Um, really, is quite a oh dear, it's not very good score, is it? Um, really, is quite a good uh, sort of choreography, I suppose, for the for the aliens. And I love the way that they all fly in at the start, so it's not that sort of just generic Space Invader style where you, everything is already set up. You know, you've got the, these very, very wacky and wild um, entry sequences for each of, the, each of the baddies. Oh dear. So, 
it's a lot harder I find than uh, than arcade games as well because because <laughs> there's there's a lot going on and you do have to be quite observant uh, of where where on the screen not only the aliens have gone but where their missiles are that they may have left in their wake. There we go, we're clear. So hopefully we can at least get as far as a challenge stage just to see what that's all about. Um, managed to get to a few of those in the uh, practice run so hopefully we can manage that uh, this time round. I'm not sure what the points threshold is for an extra life bonus. I could do with an extra life, I feel. I've only got one left. Oh, dear. Oh, hello. Now, I'm not sure I necessarily want to bring my extra life on screen at this point. Um, oh, no, I've done it. <laughs> well, it wasn't intentional, but let's see if we can at least... That's a little extra jingle for it, too. Oh, dear, I've lost it already. Right, one bug left. Come on. There we go. Challenge stage up, I think. Here we are. Right, so this one is is, is a nice uh, little break, if you like, because you, you you can't you can't be killed in the challenge stage. It's really just about seeing how many baddies you can nab for an extra bonus. There we go. Twenty nine. Too shabby. Okay, we're up to stage four now. Now I don't know whether how much. Not oh. <laughs> okay. Well, as I was saying, not sure how much longer I'll survive, but uh, there you go. That was the answer. So no, not not too deep, not too bad a score there. Zaligan Heroes. There you go. I obviously count as a Zaligan hero there. Love that jaunty little jingle at the start. Is it? It's like it, it kind of makes you feel like yeah, you don't take it too seriously, you know. Like it's uh, it's all it's all good fun. That's what that jingle says to me. It's like nice sort of jolly. Yes, of course you're you know defending your uh, your planet from from the evil uh, space bugs or whatever they are. But um, you know at the same time, remember to have fun. <laughs> That's what that jingle says to me anyway. Okay. Oh dear. See, that's the thing. If you're focused on clearing the enemies up at the top, you don't pay attention to what's going on to your left and right. You can very easily lose lose lives. Kamikaze style. So I think we've got a variety of different uh, things going on here. Obviously, from the from the original. Oh. From the original um, sort of imagery from Galaga, certainly, I think these are meant to be some kind of invertebrates. Um, certainly, the first row, these these blue blue ones with the uh, sort of insect body, they definitely look insectoid. I'm not sure about the ones at the top. I like the ones at the top, the ones that uh, transport your extra life into the uh, into the game. Um, but they, they they yeah, they sort of I'm not quite sure what they are. They have a vague sort of look of the. Um, those, um, what are they called, interceptors from Tron? They do look a little bit like that. Um, big fan of Tron myself, so you know, always, always keen to, always keen to see any little references there. Not sure if that was deliberate from Nick Pelling or not, but they, they do have a sort of hint of the, uh, the Tron look there. But uh, anyway, that's game over for me, so I might have to try that again. Um, as with Arcadians, um, in fact, possibly even more so. This is one of those games where you just, just you really do want to keep on playing. I think, come on, I can do better than that. I can do better than that. Um, we'll we'll play for as long as my enter key can stand it. I think <laughs> that's really the uh, probably the, uh, the the right way to take it. It's got an excellent little um, little background as well, by the way. Not just a star field, but it's actually got the the sort of sense of moving through space, which, which I think is is a really nice touch. Um, Multicolored as well, not just uh, not just black and white. Um, oh, hang on. oh no! Now, oh, oh! And he had that one left, mind you. I suppose that killed him. <laughs> that's 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 the one plus. It's kamikaze for them, so it does at least take them out. Right. Do you like the nice little sort of beep sound that you get, the little bow bow sound when you when you uh, eliminate them? Quite quite a, quite a sort of comical sounds. It's, it's one of those things about Nick's, Nick's games in general, actually. They do have a nice sense of fun about them. I mean, it's uh, one of the things that definitely appeals. It's a sort of hallmark, I think, of most of his games, including, obviously, the famous Frack, which we haven't yet encountered, but fear not, will be uh, making its appearance at some point in the series. Um, but yes, there's, there's a, very, a really good sense of humour uh, about about his games, which I very much enjoy. Okay, Ooh, I'm going to go lowercase there. There we go. Um, well, we'll keep we'll keep going. I think I think we need to give it a bit more of a bit more of an outing here. But 
It's interesting, by the way, that the, you get that kind of um, line effect as they fly in. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe programmers watching this might be able to explain what's going on there as to why when they're sort of mid-flight, the, 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 the sprite of the, uh, the alien kind of goes into that um, sort of Venetian blind look. I, I'm not quite sure what that's, uh, what that's to do with, whether it's a way of getting them to move faster without having to render the full, the full uh, set of pixels, I'm not sure. Um, as I say, if anyone knows, please let me know. Uh, also keen to hear, obviously, as always, from anyone that's uh, played this before. Um, I think it's a fairly well-known game. I mean, to have made an appearance in uh, Doctor Who, I mean, it, must, uh, it must, have had its, uh, must have had its fans back in the day. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm fairly confident that people will have been familiar with this one. Um, not to mention that, obviously, Nick Pelling's games are fairly famous in their own right, so I'm sure people will remember uh, Zaliga. Um, and as well, if you've played Gallagher, for that matter. Oh dear, that's taken me out. Just as I got to the challenge stage. Oh. All right, well, we'll give it one more go, I think. I, I don't like to uh, don't like to do a disservice to a, a good game, just because I'm not very good at playing it. Um, interesting in that Doctor Who clip, by the way, that they kind of gave the appearance of uh, those two um, those two chaps at the table were, were playing against each other on the sort of hollow screen. Um, now, although this does support uh, so-called two players, um, <laughs> it is very much a case of player one plays and, and then player two plays. So it's not uh, it's not a case that you can have one person controlling the uh, the Zaligans. Um, I don't know whether they're the Zaligans. Am I the Zaligan in this context, or are they the Zaligans? I don't know. But anyway, yes, you 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 can't take control of the uh, the enemy. Um, very much in sequence, but in that clip it certainly looked like they were uh, playing against each other at the same time, which was uh, quite entertaining. Nice little uh, creative license there from, uh, from the program makers, but uh, no shame in that. It's, uh, it's the art of television. Oh dear. Alright, come on, we've only got a couple left. Just make sure that one doesn't nab my life and take it onto the screen. Oh! <laughs> Well, he did take it, but in an entirely different way. All right. Well, I said one more, but that was a very short outing. So let's let's try that. Let's try that again. Let's uh, see whether or not we can get maybe just a tiny bit further um, on that outing there. It's uh, obviously a great game, so you don't want to give it uh, short shrift. So I brought it in at 39. Um, I think that's roughly where I, I, I think it fits. It's you know a, a better than the Arcadian style games uh, and sort of Galaxian-esque um, games that we've seen. Um, you know, with no disrespect to the uh, to the grandfather of the arcade game, Space Invaders. I do think that this is a lot more fun than Space Invaders. Um, not that I'm any better at it than Space Invaders, admittedly, but still. Uh, but it is not the last of what I suppose you might call a galligan style game. We, we have at least one more left in the uh, series to review. I'm not going to give away any, uh, any secrets as to which one I might have in mind or when I might be bringing it in, but uh, rest assured if, if this type of game is... is uh, oh, there we go. <laughs> if this type of game is, is one that you enjoy, um, we will be looking at at least one more of a similar style. Well, that was me talking too much and uh, losing track of where I was. Anyway, I think we'll call it a day there, so I'll just add my name to the uh, the Galligan uh, Heroes board. Or Zaligan Heroes board, sorry. Um, yes, I hope you've enjoyed that one. I think uh, Zaliga is a, is, a, is a great game. Really, really good fun. Very, very high energy, very fast, and uh, some great graphics and sound effects as well, and a real sense of fun. So, thanks for joining me for this one. I hope you'll join me for the next one in the series, and until then, Goodbye.